Hey reader friends, if you have chosen this book, it is from one of the series that we have in our library, the Sports Illustrated Kids Victory School series, but we do not have this particular one. I don't know how we missed it, but the title is Skiing Has Its Ups and Downs. The author's name is Scott Nickel and the illustrator is George Santillan. This book was published by Stone Arch Books. And I believe it was 2012. Yes, 2012. So if you've read this series, you know that each book features one of the Victory School superstars as its main character. And in this case, Danny Goal is the main character, and most of the story revolves around here, him. In the other books in the series, Danny is a, a really, really good and fast football player but in this book his sport is going to be downhill skiing he's going to learn something new and here's some stats about him he is a 10 year old kiddo in fourth grade his super sports ability is super speed and something else interesting about him is that he has a twin sister named Alicia and his best friends are Kenzie and I believe there's one more that's mentioned in the book that you'll find out about in a minute. All right, another thing that you need to know is about the setting of the story. And the setting is Triumph Mountain. And in real life, Triumph Mountain is a place where young athletes go to train for the Olympics. And in our story, it is a leading sports education resort out in the country. It is home to dozens of ski lifts and a state-of-the-art ice arena and a snowboard, snowboard park. And if you look at this map, it kind of gets you a lay of the land. So as you're reading, you can picture the setting of where Danny and the other characters are um, do, going about their fun to learn to ski. So number one, this is the ice arena. Number two, it says this is the lodge. Sometimes the lodge is also called a hotel. Three, these are the condos or apartments. Four, this is the half pipe. Five, this is the ski jump area. And then six, these are the actual ski slopes. So take a look at that for just a second. And as we read, you'll kind of be able to picture where Danny and his friends are. Chapter 1, Triumph Mountain. Whoosh! I duck and feel the snowball whiz past my left ear. Whoosh! Whoosh! Two more zoom towards me. I twist my body and jerk my head to the right. Ha! Missed me again. I zigzag in the snow, just like on the football field. Fake left, fake right. More than a dozen snowballs come at me. I'm too fast. Just when I think the fight is over, I look up and see a huge mound of snow coming at me like a cannonball. I dive for the ground. Splat! I turn and see that my twin sister Alicia's snowball has hit someone else. And not just any someone, but Ace Faraday. He is a two-time gold medal winner and world record holder in downhill skiing. Ace isn't just any Olympian. He's also my ski instructor here at Triumph Mountain Resort. Every year, Victory School takes a special trip to introduce students to new sports. I have been looking forward to it for months, of course. But now I'll probably spend the whole trip in detention. Sorry, Coach Faraday, I shout and rush over to him. He's sitting in the snow, his hair and chest covered by slush. Don't worry about it, Danny, he says. Maybe you can bring those sharp reflexes and your super speed to the slopes. I smile. I hope so, Coach Faraday. I reply. I'll see you at practice in 30 minutes, Coach says, brushing snow from his shoulders. Don't be late. Oh, and call me Ace. Sure thing, Ace, I say. 
I'm so excited about skiing lessons. On the bus ride to the resort, I sat with Josh, who's an expert on ice. All we could talk about was how cool this trip was. We'd get to spend a whole week at Triumph Mountain Resort. We would get to try skiing, snowboarding, ice skating, and other winter sports. And who would be doing the teaching? Former Olympians like Ace. I know my speed will help me be the fastest downhill skier that Triumph Mountain and Ace Faraday have ever seen. Chapter 2, The First Lesson At the morning lesson, Ace tells us about our ski gear. Boots, skis, poles, goggles, helmet, and the most important of all, bindings. The bindings hold your boots to the skis. We have to make sure that the bindings are set correctly, Ace warns. You can get hurt if your skis don't release during a fall. But if the bindings release too easily, you'll be falling a lot more than normal. Suiting up for skiing isn't like putting on a wrestling singlet or even a football jersey. With all those layers, I feel like I weigh a ton. I can barely move after I get everything on. <clears throat> I'm used to pumping my legs like a machine to carry me across the field. Now, my legs are wrapped up in big, clunky boots and strapped to a pair of long, flat sticks. I want us to have a good week, Ace says to the class. I'm a friendly guy, but I expect a lot from my students. Like everything else, you get out of this sport what you put in. Skiing isn't easy, Ace continues. It takes work and it takes patience. As a guy who does things fast, I don't like to wait. Forget patience, I say. I want to shred that hill. I push forward with my poles, but my skis get crossed and I just fall sideways onto the snow. Oof! Alicia and Josh start laughing, and then all the other kids laugh too. I even see Ace cover his mouth to hide a smile. You're going to fall a lot, Ace says, helping me up. Don't worry about it. Before you know it, you'll be flying down the hill. On the slopes, Ace goes over the basic moves. I try to focus on what he's saying, but all I want to do is fly down that hill. Hey, Alicia, I shout, let's race. Okay, she says. We push off and I'm leaning forward, trying to get some speed. I twist my body and move my legs, but these moves mess with my balance. Still, I'm weaving down the slope. When I look up, I see Alicia waiting at the bottom of the hill. She waves at me. My run takes forever, but I finally get to the bottom. Hey, Danny, Alicia says with a laugh. Want to race again? Very funny, I say, gritting my teeth a little. I am not used to coming in second, especially to my sister. I'll even give you a head start, Alicia says. She gives me a playful shove. Who would ever believe that I beat Danny Goal, the fastest kid at victory school? Ha, ha. Very funny, I say, looking away. Ugh, this is so embarrassing and frustrating. I know I'm fast. So... Why am I so slow on the slopes? Chapter 3, Wipeout That evening, I can't enjoy my dinner. And I should because it's my favorite, spaghetti with garlic bread. Aren't you hungry? I thought for sure you would need to eat after all that falling, Alicia jokes. <sighs> I slump down in my chair. It's going to be a long week. 
the next day at practice isn't going much better than the first. I just can't seem to get the skis to do what I want them to do. Ace sees my frustration. You've got to work through it, Danny. Push yourself, he says. I will, Ace, I say. I don't want to let him down. After class breaks up, I'm still in the mood to practice. I've got to get better. I want to show Ace that I have what it takes. I want to show myself, too. I try a few runs down the slope. I get a little faster with each run, but it's still not enough. Then something amazing happens. As I'm going downhill, something clicks. I get into a good rhythm. Ace calls it a groove. It's like my body seems to have figured out what to do. I'm pushing myself, digging into the snow with my poles. I know I can do it. I'm going faster and faster down the hill. Oh, uh uh-oh, something's wrong. I'm moving too fast. My legs wobble and I hit a mound. I feel my skis release from the bindings and slide out from under me. Then all I see is a white blur as I tumble down the hill. Wipe out. For a second, I, I, I'm I not sure where I am. I hear someone calling my name. Uh, Alicia? Ace? Mom? My head feels kind of funny. Like... When you spin around and around and can't keep your balance. Danny, are you okay? It's Alicia. She pulls me up. Should we call the ski patrol? She asks. No, 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 I protest. I'm okay. I I can walk. Ace glides over to us. He looks directly into my eyes. And that's why we wear helmets, he says. Are you okay? I nod. Your eyes look good. Hmm. If you feel sick or anything, be sure to let someone know. Sure sure thing, I say. I I guess I'll call it a day. I try to smile, but it's the kind of smile you make when you're at the principal's office. Oops. Or the dentist. I don't think I fooled anyone. Chapter 4. Tied in Knots The next morning, I'm still in bed when it's time for practice. Are you okay? Josh asks. Um, it's my stomach, I say. I think I'm going to have to skip ski practice today. And it's not a lie. My stomach feels like it's all tied in knots. Okay, he says. I'll tell Coach Faraday and let our chaperone know. I know I'm letting Ace down, but I can't help it. Ever since the fall, my head has been buzzing with all kinds of thoughts. Maybe I was wrong to take on downhill skiing. What if I fall again? What if I get really hurt? Maybe I should drop the class and switch to cross-country skiing. I'd be able to use my legs more and there's no danger of wiping out. Ugh. My stomach feels worse. I pull the covers over my head. Chapter 5. Rematch That afternoon, I'm feeling a little better when Alicia, Josh, and a couple of kids from class Stop by the condo. Ready for a rematch? Alicia asks. Isn't class over? I ask. Not in skiing. A snowball fight, she yells. Sounds good to me. I rush to put on my snow gear. Outside, I'm using my speed to be a one-man snowball-making machine. You're in for it now, I warn Alicia. I feel a tap on my shoulder. It's Ace. Feeling better, I see, 
he says. I, uh, um, I'm busted. Don't worry about it, Ace says. How about you take a break from the snowball fight and we talk? We start out walking through the snow. The air is crisp. The sun is out. It's a beautiful day. So when are you going to get back on that hill, Danny? Ace asks. My stomach tightens again, but I manage to say, Actually, Ace, I was thinking of switching to cross country. Ace frowns. I'd really hate to see you do that, he says. You've got real skills, and your speed is a big asset. I thought it was, but if I go too fast, I could crash again, I say. Oh, you'll definitely crash. Skiing has its ups and downs, Ace says with a laugh. That's part of the sport. I've fallen and crashed dozens of times, and a few of them were on TV in front of millions of people. How embarrassing is that? Ace puts its hand on my shoulder, but I always got back up and on those skis. Sure, sometimes I was afraid. But fear is something you conquer. You don't let it conquer you. I nod my head. Think about it, Danny, he says. I hope to see you back on the hill at tomorrow's practice. Running always helps me think. So I take off through the snow. The white stuff slows me down a little. But it feels good to have my legs pumping again. As I pass Alicia and the other kids, a snowball smashes into my face. Splat! I drop to the ground. Another snowball hits me, and another. For a second, I'm dazed. Should I quit? Head back inside? No way! I think about what Coach said, and I shake the slush from my hair. I will not let a little fall conquer me. I put on my gloves and start scooping up snow. Okay, I say with a laugh, let's finish this war. Chapter 6, Gaining Speed The next morning, Ace gives me a grin as I gear up for practice. At the top of the hill, I'm a little nervous. My stomach is tight again, but I try to ignore it. I wait for the other kids to make their runs. Alicia's gotten really good. She has excellent form, and her speed is even better. Finally, it's my turn. I push off with my poles and start down the hill. I feel the crisp wind in my face, the smooth snow beneath me. Leaning forward, I'm ready for each turn, and I feel relaxed. I'm gaining speed and confidence. <clears throat> no matter what we do, we're eventually going to fall down. The trick is to always get back up, whether it's during a snowball fight or during a ski run. I'm glad now that Ace wouldn't let me take the easy way out. I glide over a mound my skis lifting off the snow, catching some air, and the feeling is something I can't describe. I can't help shouting, Wahoo! There he goes. The end. At the end of the book, there is a glossary helping to explain some of the words that we read, and there's a little bit about the author and the illustrator. There's even a timeline that tells more about the sport of downhill skiing. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that one.